Psalms chapter 51. To the chief musician, a psalm of David, when Nathan the prophet came unto him after he had gone into Bathsheba. So now we know when this psalm takes place. Have mercy upon me, O God. This is where Nathan tells him, says, Thou art the man. David goes into a prayer. A song. This is, this is your song. Your song book in the Bible, your hymn don't. Have mercy upon me, O God. Not Mary. Not any of God, but God. According to thy loving kindness. Satan never shows no loving kindness. According to unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, again something Satan doesn't have, blot out my transgressions. David has sinned a serious sin, and he pleads to God, no one else. Wash me thoroughly with my from my iniquity. There's only one washing. Cleanse me from my sin. See John uh John 13 10 only God can cleanse from sin and we're in the Old Testament God can't clean thoroughly David this blood of Christ has not been shed the thing with Bathsheba and her husband there is no law there is no cleansing in the Old Testament or anywhere for murder and adultery that was a sin that was you committed you died you went to hell it's the sure mercies of David that God overlooked and it cost David four of his sons because he told Nathan uh, fourfold David knew the scriptures against thee God thee God only have I sinned well he he killed Uriah which was Bathsheba's husband but in the eyes of God who cares as far as they go you sinned against God I wonder if Bathsheba ever found out what David did. But the offense is to God. And done this evil in thy sight, God saw it. The eyes of the Lord in every place behold the evil and the good. That thou mayest be justified when thou speakest. And be clear when thou judgest. And Nathan told David that God says, listen, you... You brought word against the unsaved, against the Gentiles to speak against me to God for what you did. And there's even a movie out there in Hollywood made about David and Bathsheba. Still today, you can get that video if you look. 2014, and David, even though he's been washed, the wicked world still, still uses against God. Behold... I, David, was shapen in iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me. That's why Jesus Christ is a virgin birth. In sin did my mother conceive me. I mean, that right there was a father and a mother. You know why Jesus was sinless? Because Joseph had nothing to do with it. So there's a virgin birth context right there in verse 51. Sin is conceived with a man and a woman inside the womb. Where does sin begin? Now there is a thing when a child does not know what sin is, a child will not be charged with sin until they are accountable and know what it is. But all of sin. You can have a baby three seconds old and that baby's a sinner. Mary offered a sin when, when, the, when blood is shed. 
from the womb, from a baby being born, from from everything that, that it's a bloody thing to give birth to a child, and she had to bring an offering. But though they claim to her to be sinless. So sin comes by the sperm and the egg igniting. And when you become that living creature, going all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, inside the womb, from that point that you become life in a, in a woman's belly, in the womb, the wages of sin is death. You may die while inside as, a, as an embryo. Sin. You may die 110 years old. Sin. But you're a sinner. Behold, thou, God, desires truth in the inward part. He doesn't want truth as a makeup. He wants it truth from come inside. You know, you could tell the truth and still be a liar. And in the hidden part, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. It's inside, the heart. It's a heart issue. It's what you are, it's your character. Character is something inside. Your character is who you are when you're alone. Purge me with hyssop. Now hyssop, Leviticus 14, 1 through 7, Numbers 19, 1 through 19, was used as part of the process of the Old Testament sacrifices for sins and for the, the, the offerings. Now, there are some people out there, oh, they look forward to the cross. Why doesn't it say, purge me with the cross? David didn't know what the cross was. Purge me with Jesus' blood. He didn't know what Jesus' blood was. He is going by the Old Testament, which he's living. To him, the Old Testament is the present testament. And it was to be used of hyssop, not the blood of Jesus. And I shall be clean. To go to heaven? No. Abraham's bosom. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. First, I mean, excuse me, Isaiah 118. Enough to go to heaven? Nope. Jesus hasn't died yet. How's that? Now we can turn over the New Testament and read things like this, and we can absent from the body be present with the Lord. You don't see that here. In order for David, someone in the Old Testament, to be clean, they had to bring a specific animal uh, over and over and over. Listen, if, if you were involved today in a particular sin in your life and you were living in the Old Testament, you had to bring that animal each and every time you sinned that sin. It would be quite costly. To the point where you probably wouldn't have any of those animals left. And it's going to be like, oh, what would you do with all the animals? I brought them to the tabernacle. Ah, couldn't quit, could you? But then again, in the Old Testament, if you did a sin because you known you did it, you are still guilty. You were guilty of a sin in the Old Testament and today, even if you don't know, it's a sin. A traffic, uh, a police officer can give you a speeding ticket even though there's, there's no speed limit sign. You ought to know that there's a standard, law, standard speed in every county, every city, or every town that even if there's not marked, there's a speed limit. It does not need to be posted. David, you got to realize with David in Psalm 51 when he, when he met with Nathan after what has happened. David has not only done one sin, but he has done two sins that should not be washed. It cannot be washed according to the writing of the law of Moses. 
David and Bathsheba were to be taken out and they were to be stoned. The adulterer and the adulteress. Had they brought David and Bathsheba to Jesus Christ, the law would say, stone them both. And they both would, be would have died and gone to hell. No ifs, ands, or buts. That's the law. You want to go under the law? Better not. Because Jesus said in the Gospels, which is not the New Testament. Understand this. Testament, you need someone to die. You need blood shedding. The blood shedding of the Old Testament was the animals. But this is what Jesus said if you want to go back under the law. One of the churches that Paul writes to, one of the Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, or Colossians, one of those churches just wanted to go back under the law. All right, here's what Jesus said. Whosoever looketh upon a woman and lusts after her in his heart has already committed adultery with her. You want that? How about going to hell without no payment just for the thought? David just doesn't walk in his prayer closet and, you know, fee five fo fum and I'm done. Against thee, thee only have... Can you picture David pleading to God? David knows he's a dead man. He is in eternal damnation. Outside the mercy and the lovely kindness we've seen in verse 1. David goes to heaven. But because God is merciful and God is loving kindness. Because of the grace. But it cost David much. From that point on of Bathsheba, David's family, David's house, David's being was never the same. David would have done something in the time of Saul, and then, all right, David's done it. David gets a rebuke after the child dies, gets up and starts eating a meal, they start rebuking him. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. He, here's an Old Testament plead for salvation, to be washed. And David's got thousands of animals. He's the king. Why don't you just run down to the tabernacle, give some animals, boom, I'm done. It ain't like that. And you can't approach God today in the church age and say, oh, here's my sin, God, you know, boom. And have no repentance, no remorse. David's in remorse, we're going to see. You know why, why God allowed the mercies upon David? Because David's heart. Make me to hear joy and gladness. That the bones which thou, God, has broken may rejoice. I don't know what bones were broken. I don't know what that voice is talking about. I know there's no joy in David's life, and I know there's no gladness. But that the bones which thou, God, has broken may rejoice. I don't know where to go with that. I got that one too. That's under rejoicing. But broken bones. They, there was no bones being broken. When you go back and read. Hide thy face from my sin. It's right there. It, it's Nathan knew about it. God knew about it. 
Joab knew something about it and blot out all my iniquities. Again, this sin under the Old Testament could not be. You go back through the, 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 the Pentateuch and find where it says for a murderer or for an uh, uh, adulteress or what? No, there is nothing. And David's pleading to God, saying, hide thy face. And when you run to what Moses said, Moses, over there in Exodus, we're coming up to in our reading, Moses says, let me see thy glory. And what does God say? No man can see my face and live. What is the interpretation of those two verses? The glory of God is his face. Hide thy glory, your face, God, from my sins. The face that God says no man can see except he die. Create in me a clean heart. You know what, David, David did not have a clean heart. All his wives. I mean, I don't know. I'm not a woman. I don't know. But I don't really think that his wives would really appreciate having all these women at his side. I mean, a woman wants one man. She wants somebody who's going to set all reflection upon her. Not 200 or 1,000 such as Solomon. Oh, God. David wants a new heart. He wants a heart transplant. He, the Bible says in Jeremiah 17, 9, the heart is deceitful above all things. David's like, I don't want that heart no more. And renew a right spirit within me. David lost the spirit of God. In the Old Testament, you lose the Holy Spirit. It don't come in and bite on you. It comes on you. The Holy Spirit today is in us if we're saved. Not in the Old Testament. When did the Holy Spirit lead David? That second look. According to Jesus, who shall look upon a woman and lust after her in his heart has already committed. David took a second. You know David took a second look. Maybe three or four. But that second look, oh, let me see that again. That's it in the Old Testament. That's adultery. According to uh, Matthew 5, I believe. I think it is. Where Jesus speaks in Matthew. Sometimes I know that chapter. Sometimes I don't. Not... David sleeping with Bathsheba, flesh coming flesh. Jesus said when he looked the second time, he said, ooh, I like that. That is an adultery. That's when the Holy Spirit left him. And when the Holy Spirit left him, well, guess what he has? He has, you know, the man in him. The human nature. The, the deceitful heart. So I'll go get her. Renew a right spirit within me. I want that Holy Spirit back, Lord. You know, when God took the Holy Spirit from, from Saul, he replaced it with an evil spirit. You know what David pictures? He pictures a Christian. We've sinned to a point where God should just throw us into hell. No ifs, no ands, no, for God so loved the world. You better thank God that God's a loving God. That God is love. You know, these people, why did God, you know, why did God allow this? You better watch your mouth. Because that, that God that you blame loves you where he's trying to pull you out of hell. Cast me not away from thy presence. Well, if you read over and over in, in, the, in the Old Testament, when it comes to some of the particular sins, they would say, cast them out. And when it, when it read that sin, it said, he shall be cast out from his brethren, I think it is. You mark that. 
Because when it said to cast him out, you went to hell. In the Old Testament, you see that. Cast me not away from thy presence, which would be hell. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. It's already gone, David. Or maybe God even showed him tender mercies. He didn't take his spirit away from him. That may be another possibility by this verse. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. One point David was jumping up and down and dancing because here comes the ark. Next minute he's on his knees in dead terror of what he had done. Uphold me with thy free spirit. Salvation's free. Oh, Testament, you have to bring animals. But once Christ died, then will I teach transgressors thy way. Well, that's kind of hard because right after all this happens, David has a boy who falls in love with his sister. And he didn't teach him nothing. Go back and read what David said about the whole thing. There was only one verse, I think it was. Ends up with, with son number two dying. Which got son number three very upset and angry. Which later on he becomes son number four that dies. If I will teach transgressors thy ways, I, he would have went up and smacked a... a I can't think of his name right now. I didn't talk. Matter of fact, he would he would had David had two consequences of the law. Number one, he tell that boy of his, okay, Tamar's your wife now. That's what the law says. You rape a woman, she's your wife. I don't care you don't like her. She's your wife. Or you owe me a dowry. David didn't either. He couldn't. He was guilty. He was guilty. And sinners shall be converted unto thee. How can that happen today? When people are not repenting of their sins and bringing the world into church. Hey, sinners shall be converted unto you. Okay, if I change, give me a new heart, Lord. If I repent, I, I, I've done wickedly. I've sinned against you. So let's bring rock and roll into the church house so we can get the teenagers. And how are you going to get sinners to be converted unto them when you use the worldly ways? You've got to have the repentant spirit and you've got to have the, 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 the heart and the, the seeking of God to acknowledge that you've sinned against him as David has had. When people look at you like something has happened to you, you are not the person I know. When you walk out of church service and there is no change in your life, and people don't know that they see you as the old person. What's another thing you learn from 12 and 3? Restore to me the joy of thy salvation. Listen, you ain't joyful in God's salvation. You're not going to bring sinners into salvation. No, oh, the preacher preaches about money, 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 and the hypocrites in the church. And oh man, I have to spend another Sunday morning. And, hey, hey, people really. Oh yeah, let me come. Let me take part. You're so. I'm a witness to him. I I love the Lord so much. Uh, Fred, you want to go fishing this Sunday? Yeah, I'll go fishing. 
I'm going to witness to him. No. Uphold me with thy free spirit. Listen, you're saved. You got the Holy Spirit, but you ain't exercising the fruits of the Spirit. You ain't going to get no sinners to convert unto thee. And then there are churches that raise sinners converted unto thee as the fact that that's one sinner. I got 12 people say I got 120 people. No, it wasn't to God. It was to the church or to the person that not just fell. Did you get sinners saved to God or did you get sinners saved to your church? That you have to turn the page in the roll of your church uh, record and how many people got saved is. How about that? Deliver me from blood, blood guiltiness. Now, what is that? That is Uriah. What did David did David say? Murder. It is murder. But he said blood guiltiness. You know, what David said to God, "I'm guilty of blood." David did not whitewash his sins. And probably Bathsheba's too. You say, what is that? She should have been stoned. David goes up to God and says, God, I am blood guiltiness. O oh God, thou God of my salvation. Some people out there think it's their salvation. Some people out there will get people saved, like I get saved, for the church to look how many we got saved. I don't think they get saved. Now, if you do it to record it in a book, was the, the boast. And my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. Salvation will make you want to sing. Salvation will acknowledge of what your sin is without hiding it. I, there's one, I, listen, I used to do it when I was first saved and all that, and I, I got to rebuke it. Oh, Lord, forgive me for all the sins I do in, in, the, in the name of blood in Jesus Christ. Amen. That don't work. Well, God, all those sins I've done today. Listen, I'll tell you over, I'll tell you over, I've said it over, and I practice it. You, in the free time you get alone, you ask God to name the sins that are unconverted, that are not put under the blood, and you watch how quick God will start mentioning off your tongue. The sins that you have done. I have never honestly said, God, what sins are not under the blood? Oh, Lord, you know all of them. Good night. No, 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 no. My mouth starts rolling off and rolling off and rolling. And usually for me, the first one is patience. I, I start that prayer. I'm going to say, Lord, let's get this out of the way. First of all, patience. Then, okay, Lord, what sins are not washed? God will not honor any prayer. Oh, just, just put it all under the blood. Never. God wants you to name them. And some people go, well, God knows. Yeah, but God knows your troubles. And he still tells you, tell me what your troubles are. And I want to hear it so I can relieve you of it. Oh, Lord. You know, I think that old Lord is there. You ever just, oh Lord. I think David's in distress at this point. He just said, listen, I'm blood guilty. It's like, oh Lord. Comma. I, I, I think it's like this. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, oh God. Thou... God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud thy righteousness. And that blood guiltiness comes to his head. He says, oh, Lord. And he just sits there and... Open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. David's not happy. 
You think David would get up right now and go out and start witnessing to somebody? His heart is burdened. His heart is upset. He ain't going to get out of this prayer closet until God says you're clean. You ever been like that over a sin? Have you ever just, okay, Lord, I'm, no, there's sometimes that God has to work on your heart. Watch next. For thou, God, desirest not sacrifice. Now, you would look at that as like, hey, 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 yeah, right. That's not what it's talking about. Else I would give it. Look at Exodus 20, verse 13, Leviticus 20, verse 10. Thou delightest not in burnt offerings. I'm not going to give you a burnt offering. Because there is no burnt offering. You read over there in Malachi. God, you know, God is so angry with those priests. I, listen, you, you burnt offerings to me. Don't. Knock it off. You don't come to me with the right heart. Just stop it. There are churches today that are singing to God, doing things for God, and God says, Michael, give me the bark bag. You make me sick. Shut up. You and your ritualness, you and you think you don't need me, and you got great honor, you got great, shut up. You're making me sick. Shut up. You say, you say I'm full of it. What did God tell Jeremiah? Don't pray for them. I'm not going to hear it. I think he tells Isaiah or Ezekiel, they got a wound that's incurable and nothing is going to rectify that. Nothing. David, there is no sacrifice for you to give for what you've done. Nothing. But the loving kindness of God Now, why did God do it for David? Verse 17. And this ain't no fee fi fo fum prayer either. There is no way you can rectify of what 16 verses that David is doing right now. I tell you what I think David is doing, and you can't even tell. First of all, I think he's, he is sweating. I think he probably can feel his heartbeat beating in every pressure point of his body. If he hasn't soiled himself, he, I, he should have. If he has no strength to even be on his knees. And if he doesn't come up with his face flat, from his face being flat to the floor for all the time that he's down face hitting the floor the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit a broken and contrite heart now what does contrite mean it means to break you know what God wants for a sacrifice not bulls and goats. You can bring all the bulls and goats you want, but listen, if you don't bring it with the right heart, how many people in the Old Testament brought the goat they're supposed to, but they didn't bring it with the right heart? All right, here's your goat. Goodbye, God. Read Malachi. Look at the word here. The sacrifice of God are a broken spirit and a broken and broken heart. And we just read about broken bones. God wants that part of you that belongs to him, the spirit, that gave man life. He wants that broken. And if you don't have a broken spirit, you are not ever going to get a revival. Never. When you have done wrong to what God has given to you for life, and a broken and a broken heart, 
God doesn't want just a broken heart. He wants a broken and a broken heart. He wants you sorry for your sin. Now, what does that take for the 21st or 22nd, whatever century we are, Christian today? I am so sick and tired of this, say this prayer. And you, no, I think a lot of people are going to go to hell. Because you don't talk about sin. Just say this prayer. We live in an age today where adultery and fornication is shacking up uh, common law marriage. We give it all kinds of pretty names. David said blood guiltiness. When you've got a church that does not preach or mention sin by name, you ain't got a right church. you got to walk up to that pastor and look at him in the face and say, What are you hiding from, buddy? What are you hiding from? When you air condition hell with Hades. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What if you don't, what if sin is just something minor to you? It ain't gonna be the blood of Jesus. What do you think David did when the next woman advertised her body to him? You think he was so quick to go looking at her? I wouldn't be surprised if David made a law. He was a king. Oh God, thou will not despise. Contract means to break, bruise, rub, or wear. You got in that verse, you got three broken. The Bible tells us that not a bone of Jesus was, was broken. David says something about a broken bone. You know what's supposed to happen in your sin, complete life? You are to do something that did not happen to Jesus. You are to break your bones inside. And I don't mean somebody to go out there and break his arm. No, that means inside of you, who you are, what you are, is to be broken. It is to ache all the way inside of you. As worse as, as uh, uh, arthritis. Your sin should give you so much pain. And listen, nothing but the blood can wash it away. And before you do it the next time, you are, uh, no, no, no. I can tell you how you get rid of cigarette, drug, and alcohol problem. You put people in a contrite heart who want to serve God, who know who God is, and who wants to do right. You won't have alcohol problems. You can't do that. The preaching's gone. <coughs> Billy Sunday shut all kinds of package houses and liquor places down. He shut them down. How? They're preaching. You ain't going to get that revival, America, because you ain't going to get the preaching and you don't have the contract heart. Even with the King James Bible. Do good in thy good pleasures unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Why does David mention that? Because as king he destroyed the city. You want to know another thing about your sins? You better realize they destroy your house. They destroy everything that's within the walls of your house.
That's how you get a contrite heart. When you realize it's not just you, others are involved. You have shamed your church. Well, no one knows about it. What if they did find out about it? Brother, you they don't realize the judgment seat of Christ. You don't understand the sins are not under the blood are going to show up before your mama, before your father, before your wife, before your husband, before your children, before your pastor, before everybody in the church. The sins are not under the blood will show up. Before Jesus Christ, the one that died for your sins, that you did not plead the blood, they will be there in all the world. Oh, excuse me, take that back. All the Christians will see of who you are and what you are. Everything you've done that's not under the blood. Come on, Pastor. It will be all revealed. Deacons, piano players, Sunday school teachers, door knockers, street preachers, everything. Oh, I just love my pastor, but you hate the President of the United States. Thou shalt, then shalt thou be pleased. With what? When you get your heart right, you get your family right, you get your city right, you get your church right. With the sacrifices of righteousness, and that's not animals. That's that contrite heart. That is that heart that's been broken. That is the spirit that's been broken. That is on your knees to the Lord, pleading for mercy and grace. And for us Christians to realize that Jesus Christ was whipped, was bruised, had his, had his beard pulled, had the crown of thorns burned upon his head, nailed. So we can walk to him and say, Lord, you forgive me for this in the name of blood of Jesus. Thank you. Goodbye. Lord, just put it underneath all the blood. Put it all in the blood. Thank you. Good night. You think that's how the revivals in America were in England? The sacrifices of righteousness is when you know what it took. More so for an Old Testament Jew when he saw that animal die violently for what he did. We've never seen the sacrifice of Jesus. We did not see it. We did not witness it. But we know it was brutal and brutality to be on what we can reckon that the Bible says you couldn't even tell that he was a human. And what do you do with his blood? You just put it in the blood. Thank you. And whole burnt offerings. Let me try that verse again. When thou, thou shalt be pleased with the sacrifices of righteous, with burnt offerings, after the contrite and broken spirit and heart. Don't bring your offerings if you have not had a broken whole burnt offerings. Then shalt thou offer bullocks upon thy altar. You need a serious prayer meeting between you and God. And that's not going to happen. not going to happen. And what happened to David should never have happened. David and Bathsheba should have been burning in hell today. But because of a broken spirit, because of the tender mercy of God, a broken and contrite heart, and because of the tender mercies of God, David is in heaven today. I don't know about Bathsheba. Don't know enough to, to, to say about her. That's another thing in the Old Testament. You, you don't know if you had a salvation. It was definitely between you and God.
God does not take confessing our sins lightly. And a lot of people are going to, a lot of Christians are going to go to heaven and they're going to realize that why is that sin there? I put it in, like, you know, you, you, you think you put it under the blood, but you didn't. And there's going to be a lot of people who are going to end up at the great white throne judgment. They're going to say, well, didn't I trust Jesus? Didn't I call upon him? Didn't I have my sins washed? And then, no. No fear today. No fear of the Lord today. Just say this prayer and then you're done. Without no mention of sin. You know, the, you know what the prerequisite to be saved? You got to be a sinner. And the Bible records in Corinthians that there's two kinds of reactions to sinners. You got caught. Oh, I'm sorry. I got enough tears. You see, I'm sorry. Look at tears. Give me another onion, please. Look, I'm really crying. And then there's the guy who repents, and he can smell the fire and brimstone. And you know what? That's where I am. And outside the mercy of you, God, outside the mercy of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, unless I believe on you right now, unless I believe with my heart that you can do it, heart, believe with the heart that shows up. Believe in the heart. Romans 10 shows up here. And confession with the mouth. Then David said, I will speak. That's here. And when I hear somebody saved and they don't speak about Jesus Christ, I have a right to say, I doubt. I doubt you. Now, I don't know. Because the Bible says you need to be born again. You need to be saved. Next, you need to be baptized. Next, you need to go in all the world and tell the gospel. Those are only three things that God tells a Christian of a surety. What did Paul do when he got saved? He testified at Christ. He was baptized. And he went preaching. Ethiopian eunuch, he got saved, he was baptized, and he went back to Ethiopia and told them all about what he had. That's what it comes down to, salvation and repentance. It's not something that God takes lightly. Because if God took it lightly, if God wasn't serious about repenting, I'll ask you a question. Why did Jesus suffer so much? Jesus could have came down and went right to the cross. I mean, he could have been born, lived a life in Jerusalem, at 33 and a half years, gone up to Calvary, say, here, nail me. I've died. I shed my blood. Why was it in 24 hours that he was abused, misused, mistreated? And then die and not leave our sins in hell because he didn't go to hell. You're crackers. You're crazy. You're insane. You better believe Jesus went to hell for you and left your sins. Somebody have to suffer for those sins. Your sins deserve hell. How did they get to hell if Jesus didn't put them in hell? What did he say on the cross? What did the rich man say in hell? I think they both said, I thirst. And you're going to walk up to God and say, uh, I, I said this prayer. Jesus in the garden prayed as it was drops, of, his sweat was drops of blood. And he didn't pray about the death. That's not what troubled him. The sins of mankind.
That's what troubled him. And we are in a day and age today, all sin is rampant and public size. You think the churches are messed up? They're going to get messy. Just say this prayer. Say this prayer. Follow up to me, everybody. The Lord say. And no mention of sin. I'm going to preach the truth. If you don't like it, that's tough. You'll have your problem with God. Salvation's plan is just a fairy tale, but their lies don't change the truth that Jesus died for you, and the word says his returning could happen any day. I'm gonna shout it from the housetops, proclaim it from the mountaintops, tell the world around me Jesus said. Make a joyful noise.